Hi there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is two-part video. So if you're not interested in mixing paint, um, so you may not want to be a part of this video. I'm going to mix the paints and then stop the video and do another video. I'm trying to get it set up for where I'm going to be sitting. Okay, yeah. Because I, I don't know, because I don't want videos that are going to be too long. Um, but because some of this is probably going to be put elsewhere, I'm just, I have a mask that I'm using when I mix my paints just because I get headaches really bad and I'm sensitive to chemicals, even the pouring medium. So I just have to be careful. Anywho, drink me a little bit of water. And this won't take but just a few minutes, but in case you're interested on how I mix the paints, for those that are thinking about giving this a try, I'm trying to get everything done while the weather is still warm because it's Christmas time and I want to resin some of my paintings. So it takes at least a week before you can resin them. And I don't use silicone because if you use silicone, it's a whole different story. So I don't use silicone. Issues with resining. But anyway, so I'm waiting on my respiratory mask to come in. And I'm hoping and praying it's going to be here this week so I can go ahead and we're supposed to have 70s and upper 60s. And I do not resin inside my house to reach their own, but I absolutely won't do that. Um, I have pets and I have a very small house, one bedroom, not a whole lot of square footage, like 700 feet, square feet, it's like the size of one bedroom apartment. So I don't want to, um, uh, I just don't want to have... Even if I opened all the windows and had fans going, it's still, it's not a good idea. You know, when you have pets in the house. And whatever building you live in, you know, that stuff can go through the, the vents, too, you know. So, um, I have a, a building on my property. It's like an old cabin. I'm working on getting that set up, cleaned out real good, and do the table stuff set up in there. So, I can do my resin pouring <clears throat> once I get my respiratory mask. So anyways, today I'm, I'm you know, my, my nose allergy, it starts tickling, it just drives me crazy, and I get these little hairs in my eyes. Okay, let me turn my bangs. So I have a sea breeze color, deco art, and then I have the Laguna, which is kind of like a turquoise tealish, same company, deco art. Um, and... I try to buy everything made in USA, and I just found out a very disheartening thing because I had ordered these paints from US Art Supply, and they're all about you know we're we're US made, we're US everything, right? So then I was looking at their pouring medium I had bought from them. I bought canvas pouring medium and some paints from them, and it said um, designed in the US. And I had, like even looked up their manufacturing locations and everything, and it said manufactured or made in PRC and me and teeny tiny print. I was like, you've got to be kidding me. I was so mad. So anyways, I will not be buying from them again. Um, but uh, a lot of these, you know, they're all like the golden. That is uh, there. I know exactly like where their manufacturing plant is. And everything. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, because you know, you deal with chemicals and, and standards, regulations and anyways. Um, so on back to the paints i'm using the deco art my favorite amethyst metallic purple and then i created a a lemon yellow with us art supply uh their yellow which is just your like basic yellow here and then their basic white so i'm going to mix that together i still have some left over now i did have mixed this just with water so it's a little concerning because I am going to be using medium. So it's it, that's the big thing is trying to get your concoctions, you know, and um, as far as what exactly you're mixing, you know, you have different brands. It's, you know, it's a lot of trial and error. So I am going to um, use this, though, because that is the exact color that I want. And I don't need what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a base white. Um, but I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. So most people, they just put their, you know, their base and their pillow is, is all white, but I'm not going to do that. 
because I thought the lemon yellow would look really pretty with these colors and adding this, you know, this metallic purple. So I'm going to be doing yellow with the white. So I'm going to just use this cup here and then my gold. And that's what I'm going to be doing. And I have this 24 karat gold that I really like that. And I've tried that with different mediums. I've used um, GAC 800. And I think that it holds its pigment really well, this particular gold. And, and then I've used the Deco Art Pouring Medium. And then I had the Pouring Medium by US Art Supply. And I think and when I look back now that they've all, pretty much they're all dried except for one. And they, I think that this, this color for metallic is, it just holds its pigment really well. So, and I even used it with water too. So I tried all the different mixing with, you know, colors so I know what works best. And anyways, so I'm thinking about adding like, um, in one of these two colors, uh, not in every color, but in one of these two, I'm going to add like maybe a drop of dish soap and a couple drops of water. That'll create bubbles in air, but that's that's okay. But it'll also help just a little bit of cells because um, these don't really give you a lot of cell activity with this cheaper medium. I'm going to use this medium today. And uh, so you just don't really get a whole lot of uh, cell activity with it. And uh, I just want a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. I tell you what, I've seen the silicon and I tell you what, it makes some fantastic interesting cells, but you can't control it. Like it's just everywhere. And um, that's just not what I want. And another thing about using silicon is that, you know, um, when you resin this, you know, you have to be careful. There's a video, I'll try to put a link in that. Uh, she talked about specifically how she she waited like three weeks and then she washed down her painting and everything because there was some issues with, you know, putting resin on top of uh, paint that had silk on it. So I just, um, anyways, I, I just don't like not control the cells. And they're really cool looking cells. If you want to do a painting with cells, they're really big bubble looking cells. But um, I think the dish soap, when you use that, it has little tiny cells, but I would not torch it because it creates like a, a speckled, it just looks like a big froth of bubbles. I don't particularly like that. If something like that, then that's what you want to do. Add the dish soap and then torch it and you'll get that frothy bubble look. <laughs> but I don't like that look. I like, I like just a little bit here and a little bit there, not just a vroom, big clump of it. But everybody's different, you know, but that's the thing about fluid art. You know, it's, it's individual, it's unique. And here I go. So I'm going to put this mask on. So I will try to talk loud enough. So you guys can hear me. <clears throat> so I'm going to start with the base, of course. <clears throat> and I'm going to start with my yellow that I had left over. It's like a lemon yellow, and I just really like this color. And I think it would look really pretty with that. that. Anyways, that is Sea Breeze. Sea Breeze. This over here, kind of give myself some space. I don't need this over here right now. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> and I have this little bitty, I thought this was really cute. This is, comes in a fruit cup, which by the way, these fruit cups make perfect little um, leftover paint, or if you want to mix paint but not big amounts, because it comes with the lid. I would put saran wrap over that and then put that down on top of it. And I would even add a piece of tape just in case, you know, it gets not bumped or something like that. And uh, anyways, so, and it has these cute little sporks. And it, I thought that would be perfect for drizzling. You know, kind of scoop it and then you just, if you do the drizzling technique. I don't know if you do. I do. I like to flick and drizzle Dutch pour <clears throat> that I kind of created. It's just for me, but if you like it. <clears throat> I have another video where I showed where I did that. Okay, so where's my plane? Oh, I'm going to start with, and I'm not going to make a whole lot of this, just enough to cover this. And I'm not going to use as much as I have been because I do more of an abstract. Once I, I do the Dutch pour technique, but I do more of an abstract where I cover the whole canvas, you know, and 
but I'm just, I'm not going to do that this time. This time what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go from here to here, kind of a little bit of a wiggle, and I'm just going to blow it out. And then I'm going to put bling here on the corner after it dries, and then here on the corner, put some decorations. I'm spilling my paint. And uh, de decorate it later. I just made a mess. So, anyways. So, with this and the craft paint, I do one to one, and if I don't like the consistency, then I'll add more. And what I don't want is a whole bunch and it's too runny. And this is pretty thick. Not as thick as the ones that comes in the tube, but it's got a pretty thick consistency to it. And that's the U.S. Art Supply white. So I'll add, that's probably about a teaspoon. Now these don't, I have not seen a whole lot of air. Sometimes they talk about when you get bubbles in your paint. I haven't seen that. But when you add this soap or some kind of additive, that's when you really have to be careful. Because when you get air, sometimes you can, I mean you can torch it, but sometimes you can't always see it and then it rises up later once it dries and it's, it's over after that. But, when somebody, if you add rubbing alcohol as an additive for cells, I do not recommend torching stuff. So you got to be careful when you stir it. But this, I can just be really rigorous. And it's okay. And I'm going to put the lid on this. <clears throat> I wanted to do this earlier today, but I was just not. Hey, when you see me on a camera, everything looks okay, <laughs> as far as physical-wise, but there's days I just have to lay in bed and wait out the pain. So, anyways, that's why I'm doing it late at night. I need another perk. Not really late, but. And just about half of what I added of the white. I'm probably going to add more white here in just a little bit because I'm definitely going to have to have more than this. But I want to mix it a little bit at a time because <laughs> if you add too much yellow and you've already poured all the amount you're going to pour in there, then, well, you're just stuck. Unless you want to make a whole bunch more, and I'm not trying to do all that. Okay, so now I'm going to add the white. Fork is about done. I should have not put that in there, but that's all right, I'll just use this. I'm about out of this stuff here. Then I'm going to put another thing of pouring medium in. Two more tablespoons, and I should have what I need. So this is getting pretty thick. And that's another thing. I add it a little bit at a time. So I don't over mix. Because it's okay when you don't have enough medium and it's really thick. But I make sure I add a little bit at a time. <laughs> anyway. And I have gloves here to wear, but for some reason, oh, get it together, Melissa. Yeah, I'm going to get it together. I tell you, I found, I was having problems with a couple of those paints, washing them off my hands, which I, I try to wear gloves, but I'm out of those regular gloves, and these just, they're kind of messy. But I found that Borac is a good detergent to get this stuff off of. Okay, about three quarters. And I would say probably one more of those. 
That's actually the right consistency, but that's not going to be enough. So now I know that's the amount, of, that's the consistency one that I want. So now I just need to make more with that part ratio. Okay. I'm going to fill it up to about here to do that because it's, let's see, that is a, I believe that's an 8, no that's not, I think it's a 15 by 20, I'm not sure. My biggest ones that I have are 18 by 24, which I'm saving <laughs> to do. I don't know, I have a 32 ounce resin kit and I'm not sure if that's going to be enough. And I haven't decided if I'm going to do resin on the bigger one or not. I'm looking into um, like a varnish. But when I add decor though, I definitely want to resin that. I have this one and another one that I'm going to add decor to. No, two more that I'm going to add decor to. My peppermint surprise, I'm going to be doing decor on the four corners. And then um, on my... Uh, Mm. Early morning escapades, I'm going to be doing a little bit of bling in the corner. Just a little bit, because I already have glitter on that, and then resin that one. <clears throat> but I think when you do the really big paintings, especially, you know, if you're going to give to somebody or sell one that's going to be in a room that has a lot of light, you definitely want to use the resin. It protects it from... Know, years to come, yellowing and all that other stuff, which speaking of mediums and mixing, I do not use glue. I won't use glue because I know a lot of people do, but it puts it at risk for yellowing. You, you know, look, you can't see what's going to happen years down the road. I want to give my paintings the best chance they have the least risk of issues as it is. <laughs> There's all kinds of things that can happen in this journey as it is, and I wouldn't purposely put something in there that can cause issues. I've seen some people make beautiful pieces, and then it ends up with dries with cracks in it, and it's just, <laughs> what a bummer. But I know those who have been mixing for years, they can figure out how to mix just right and they won't have that issue, you know. So to each their own. Okay, that is coming out just right. Just the color that I wanted. It is so pretty. I, I don't think I'm going to get a good I don't know how the coloring and the lighting looks in here. That's the consistency that I want. That's it right there. That be it right there. I got a little bit of yellow on that, I believe. I'm gonna dip that in there. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more of the white. And I'm gonna be done with that. I'm gonna add some yellow. And then another thing, the pouring medium. And I'm about out of that white. You know, I've been to the craft store twice in Michael's. I don't live near Michael's. It's in Tulsa, pretty far away from me. And everybody keeps buying up all the white in, the, in these little bottles. There was no purple and there was no white. <laughs> I'm like, and I, I visited Michael's. I travel for my medical appointments. And whenever I go to the city, I try to stop in the store. And each time the white is bought out, the white and purple. I'm like, okay, I guess somebody who's managing the store doesn't know the flow of colors at certain times of seasons or something. I don't know what's going on, but I mean, white is pretty primary, and they didn't have any. I was bummed. And I just added yellow to my paint thing. I have to get that out. Just throw that in there. Uh -huh. 
right, let's go ahead and All right, done with that. Okay. That's going to be nice. Now, I've seen some people, they mix pouring medium, water, and flow troll. Everything's flow troll, flow troll, flow troll, but huh, not me. And, um, yeah, two more in there. I'm almost done. Yay. Um, this one, anyways. <laughs> so, when I get done mixing, I'm going to end the video um, and then I'm going to do the painting part. But I'm just doing this in case those just not watching. I'm going to do that. The mixing for any of those, I know that I'm in like these different groups and people that I know that like to paint. So just in case you're curious, I take these two forks, kind of makes kind of like a little whisk in there and you put them like that. And stir like that. And I'm wearing a mask with filters. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to need a little bit more. It's pretty thick. A little thick. Yeah, need some more pouring medium. Getting there. I don't want it. I don't want it too thin. Go on. Rather have it a little bit too thick than I would have too thin. Oh, that's pretty. It's like lemon drop yellow. That's going to be it. I don't know that's going to be enough, though. No. I think... I might have some white left over. I can mix the white and yellow on the canvas. That's probably a little too thick. Yeah, that's still pretty thick. It's not sinking. It needs to sink when it lands. It's not how it drips off the, the stir stick, but it's how it lands into the paint. Does it puddle at the top when it lands into the paint, or does it sink? That's the thing. See, a lot of people go by this. Oh, yeah, that looks nice and thin. But see how it's, it's, it runs, but then it kind of sticks to the fork as well. So that's still a little too thick. But when it lands in the cup, it piles. Kind of like semi-thick yogurt ice cream. So that's still a little too thick. Uh, you know, it won't flow as well if it's too thick. And because this is a Dutch pour, I don't really want it too. I'd rather have a little bit thicker. Because I'm using a blow dryer. And then I use a straw. And the thing I do, I see some of them, they blow straight down. You know, it depends on what kind of effect you want. You want it to go a little bit wide. But I just like to blow straight at, at that angle. So that I'm taking just the top layer of the paint and just a little bit underneath the paint. And then I go down underneath it with the straw to push the rest of it out. Just 
Este once set. But that's okay because I'm only adding a little bit at a time. I'm about out of white. I've got that tube over there, but I've got some medical appointments coming up, so hopefully I'll be able to pick some more up. I won't go to the Allergenal store and buy the cheap stuff from China. I won't do it. Just won't do it. Yeah, it's still too thick. It's getting there, though. It seems like I'm taking forever, but... <laughs> I wanted to just do it a little bit at a time to get it just right rather than, oh, no, I put too much in there. It's too thin. You know, especially when you're running low. You have an accident and pour too much in a cup and you're out of white or out of the color you're mixing with. Boy, that's a drag. I have so much paint. It's ridiculous. But I have very little white. Because the stores don't have any. <laughs> Of course, you know, they have the more expensive stuff, you know, um, like in the tube. And I do have some of that. But um, I'm starting out with a small investment because, you know, during this pandemic, I, I used to eat out like twice a week. Not like at a restaurant, but like, you know, go through the drive through or whatever. And I, I <laughs> that stopped. <laughs> So I saved some money, and it's just like a birthday present to myself to buy all this paint and stuff. My birthday's next month, and uh, anyways, so I I like to make Christmas gifts. So I don't know, I might try to sell one and get my money back for the supplies, and then I can buy more if I really want to do this for long term. I'm not trying to like. Be a professional painter. I just like to make crafts for Christmas. Last year, or a couple years ago, I used to crochet a lot. Especially when I had, you know, people that had little ones. And I made a lot of baby stuff. And blankets. But I just can't do that. My, you know, sitting there, you know, it, my neck is a mess right now i'm getting such bad headaches just from driving to my medical appointment it's just i come home and i'm like all i can do is lay down and wait out the pain so i thought well with painting i can sit up get up get down get up get down you know can't sit for long periods of time stand for long periods of time anyway it's fun i've been wanting to do painting for a very long time I watch all these youtube videos and uh, I said, dang it, I just need to get with the program. I didn't know I could draw. So I was in the hospital after I came back from Desert Storm and I had neurological issues. And I was in the neurosurgery ward for about a month and I was bored. And so this sweet little lady came by and she had these little things with the animal pictures of animals on it. And uh, so I started doodling. Next thing I know, I was like, I had no idea I could draw. So I sketched this lady had lost a child to a drunk driver and the last time her kids was pictured together. I sketched color pencil portrait like 11, no it was a big one, like a 16 by 20 I guess. And then another lady for grandchildren and I had no idea. I just never knew, you know. So you never know what you could do till you try. You should give it a try. <laughs> you know, do something that you you don't know if you could do until you try it. Try it. You know, and art is, I don't know, it's like therapy. And that's another thing. You know, I did go to PTS, PTSD groups and we did a little bit of art stuff in there, you know. But um, more like crafts. And I, I, I my volunteer in smart groups something but you know crafts make great christmas gifts you know i think i think i'm where i want to be i hope one more let me do a half 
because this is the base, you know, so it's really important. <laughs> I need them all to have the right consistency, but this, when you put the Dutch pour and you, and then you put the base around it, that helps, it's supposed to help it flow. And if you have it too thick, it's not going to, you know, want to do what you want it to do. All right. Got that one done. And that is just about the right amount that I wanted. Now, three quarters way full. That's just right. I think, I hope. Show you how it lands in the cup. It's still pulling. See how it, it doesn't go down? It should be going down, straight down. But it's starting to sink a little bit quicker. So it's a little bit on the thick side, but careful too. Because I'm going to be adding a couple drops of water. And dish soap to one of these paints. So I don't want it to be too runny. All right, and my table is all wobbly. Next, this one. First, I gotta go wash my hands, and I'm gonna set this somewhere where I won't knock it over. <clears throat> Give me another glove on before I start the next adventure of mixing. And I need a drink. As you know, this is, honey, watch your, watch your little tail, baby. She's all laid out with her legs all spread out, my poodle. This is uh, Veterans Day week, and I don't know. It's kind of a, it's a struggle. <laughs> oh, I just have issues. Um, really and truly, the way society and the government and the, anti-americanism i don't want to get into politics but um i don't know so much propaganda and i have to relive that every year um just the propaganda it bothers me i know what happened i was there so i, damn, I know <laughs> anyways but um <clears throat> But, you know, it kind of reminds me of all the, <clears throat> twin, they say 22 veterans a day um, commit suicide, which is <clears throat> disheartening because there's no standing up for the veterans trying, you know, on this issue. You count 22 veterans 30 days a month times 12 months. And uh, in one country alone, that's how many people are dying by their own and it's just it's incredibly sad because there's so much corruption and denial of care and just it's just it's bad um, it's a very serious social justice issue and so anyways but PTSD and all the things and the groups and that's one thing I, I want to get <clears throat> involved in art therapy because <clears throat> that's a those are important very important and so if I can just master a couple techniques, it would be pretty easy to add to the only thing about, you know, doing a group that's like a week long, you know, you just have to have a place, you know, to um, store the paintings. So I um, think about, you know, finding the right connection with, you know, local places that do stuff, you know, not necessarily at the VA, but... 
I just figure, well, God, you'll, you'll guide the way. Whatever you want me to do. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Put my mask back on. This is the Sea Breeze color, which is kind of like a minty green. It's so pretty. So pretty. I like it a lot. <laughs> now I'm going to wash these off. Get rid of these. Throw my stuff away. Clean as I go. So we'll get two out of hand. like those straws in the middle of that paint because I put those in my mouth to blow on the paint. <clears throat> now, I have been saving skins. Paint skins. And I thought it through and I, I tend to overwhelm myself and do too much with my condition. I have to pace myself. My life evolves around pain control. Uh, if I go too much in a day, then you know, if I stand too long, uh, I'll rip a disc, literally from standing. I did that this summer. I was fishing, or it might have been the cast netting, and I even had my walker with me, and I just apparently overdid it, and I tore my disc a little bit more than it was already torn, and I was in bed for two weeks, miserable and agony. I mean, bad, bad pain. Like, I couldn't even turn over. It's horrible. So I just have to be careful <sighs> about that. So... A lot of people save their paint skins, the stuff that Kyle pours off, and make beautiful pendants and magnets and all kinds of stuff. But I thought, you know, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm limited on space. And, you know, I might save something for a specific little gift or whatnot. So, anybody that, you know, doesn't have their own skins, but they like to make stuff like jewelry, paint skins are fantastic to use, especially if you resin stuff. Because a lot of people use these paint skins to, um, and I don't need a whole lot of this, <clears throat> make things. And I've seen some beautiful crafts from paint skins. You know, the designs that come from fluid art stuff. And so I will be happy to, you know, if you're local, I'll, I'll just meet you somewhere and get them to you, you know. Or, I'll be happy to ship them to you. You know, but you let me know that you're interested, you know, um, in paint skin. Because I know a lot of people, especially at Christmas time, they make things. I know there's people, they make jewelry and pendants and all kinds of stuff. Just endless ideas. I will be happy to give you my paint skin. <clears throat> so... I'm probably not going to be doing a whole lot of, I'm trying to get everything done before the really cold weather fits. And I think this week is probably going to be the last of the 60s and 70s, which is perfect for me to go out there and do some resin, resining outdoors in my cabin. I don't have the electric on it right now, so I could run a cord though, it's not a big deal. But um, anyways, and I really don't want to do paintings unless I can resin them, because I'm like, if I'm going to do a big painting, I want to have the full-blown glorious resin look or varnish or something. I want the whole thing, you know. I, I just don't. I'm not going to do paintings unless I can resin them. So anyways, I probably will not be doing paintings in the cold winter months. I have to bring out something else to do, <laughs> craft-wise. So I will, um, springtime, summertime, early fall, well, whip out some paintings. <laughs> I really like it. Oh. This stuff is pretty thin. This stuff is really thin, so you use less of the pouring medium with this. And there's plenty of YouTube videos that tells you, you know, the different types of mixing and, um, but you really kind of experiment. The mixing is a big part. This is the big thing, either how well your your painting is going to turn out. I mean, the techniques matter too, 
But mixing is a big, big thing. Because if you get it too thin, it's just going to look, it's, you know, or you could dilute the, the pigment, knowing what kind of, you know, especially people that, like, use the powders, you know, that has the mica in it, you know, knowing how well they mix with other paints, you know, there's a, you know, it's a big, big thing, the mixing part, it's a big thing. So that's pretty thin. I don't know if I can show that the way it lands. Let's try to show it. You can see the bottom of the cup. It's sinking really quickly. So that's going to be the top part of the, it's going to flow. Real, that might even be too running, actually. <clears throat> this stuff, you use it up pretty quick when you use a pouring medium. And, you know, pouring mediums are pretty expensive. You can get these, these little deco arts and the craft smart for under a dollar at Michael's. Like 79 cents, 89 cents. Now the metallics cost, you know, a couple bucks. But uh, the pouring mediums are pretty pricey. Anywhere from, I don't know, 12 to that GAC 800 cost me like 40 bucks. You know, they ordered it for me. Went and picked it up when I had a medical appointment. And uh, I'm not sure I like GAC 800. It's okay, but, but the pouring medium, you can use just water. If you learn how to mix well, go to YouTube. <laughs> there are people that use just water and paint. So when you, the price, the most expensive thing, really, the canvas and the pouring medium. But another thing about canvases is you can go and find paintings at yard sales. You know, <laughs> especially some old ugly painting that somebody sells. They don't really appreciate it. They, you know, you can get painting, you get the frame, you know, and you, you get the idea, and the canvas, and you can repurpose the canvas. There's videos on how to repurpose the canvas and prepare it for a new adventure, and you're going to save a lot of money doing that. Frames to buy new are pretty <laughs> pricey. Now, if you're going to start up as a business and have a design studio and all that other stuff, you need to have the best because, you know, it's not a hobby. You're putting things in people's homes that are beautiful and they want the best quality ingredients. And then, of course, like me, I got to have the bling. Not on every item, but bling really adds to the bling. Not everybody likes bling, but I'll tell you what, I've seen the most beautiful pieces in the art galleries and the big stuff, the, one, the big ones that sell. I'd say 80% of the time they have bling <laughs> under the resin. And it just, I don't know. I mean, if somebody's going to spend several hundred dollars to thousands on a big, large painting, you know, it's it's going to have bells and whistles. <laughs> All right. I think that's going to be it. That's way more than I need, too. I don't need all that. I'm only going to take a little strip of that. That's way more than I I won't even use half of that. But I don't want to mix up just a tiny little bit. I have some that's left over. Use it for the next project. This is a common. I really like this color. And this color, I'll probably use that in several paintings. So I'm going to take this out of the way. I'll be right back. Thank <laughs> you. 
Girl, my baby's crying. They are. This is their nighttime. These boogers. I've been sleeping all day and then been doing something crazy. I tell you what. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm wondering why my heating pad's not working. Because I don't have it plugged in. And then in the middle of the night, I tell you, close your eyes and pretend like you're asleep and see what your pets are doing. It's interesting. Put your camera on at night. These boogers. Oh, man. I have about an hour. My battery left on there. But, uh, they like wait for me to go to sleep. And then they just start doing weird stuff. <laughs> They're so smart, these poodles. Any dog, really. Okay, so. <clears throat> I think I'm going to make them get up. I'm not going to let them sleep. That's so mean to me. Because <laughs> I know when I'm ready to go to bed, they're going to be, whoa. Why not? I'm so Especially my male dog, he's like, when I'm getting ready to go to sleep, he's like, he'll just go, it's so weird, he'll go over to the corner where the bathroom door is, and he'll start barking at me. Like, no, you're not going to sleep. He's something else. He's a trip, for real. I don't have this part next door. But I love my doggies. Oh, I hope y'all can hear me. I, have, I don't like what they've done with Facebook because I can't even tell. I can't tell. I can't see if anybody's commenting. I can't figure out how to put a title on it. Um, I can't. I just really wanted to set, re change the setting to who can view it. And I, it doesn't even offer me that. I hate the new Facebook. And I especially hate that they're discriminating against Christmas. I, tried to, I had a scripture in church this last weekend that, I wanted to look up and I tried to share it and like Bible resource was just like it was an article about Bible study tools and um they say it was spam on my own page I couldn't even share a link I said hey here's what this verse means it was about it was really interesting you know it's the thing about the Bible you can read it and then you know what I mean that it's something new it stands out every time you read it and so it was about it was in Psalms 119, I think verse 83, talking about I'm like smoke in a, no, I'm like a bottle in smoke. And I'm like, what? I did not even understand what that means. And it never really stood out to me before. So I looked it up and I found a really, really interesting article that I wanted to share, you know. And, and it said, you cannot share that that's spam. I'm like, what? So I'm going to be sending a letter to corporate facebook and you they they can't i don't care if that's social media they can't tell somebody that you're sharing a belief about something is spam and it i you know i don't believe that's the founder doing that that's people that work for him being on <laughs> i don't know what that was about mm. but yeah they're gonna get a letter from me and anyways i've seen people a lot of people complain about them just spamming stuff just randomly and just weird stuff and um but that's i've never had that happen before and i have a whole i have a page where you know i'm just reading the bible for you know if you just want to listen to the bible being read you know and um i don't know i've i've heard i have a friend from israel she talked about like i think it was youtube was doing weird stuff you know because they're you know israel stuff and jewish stuff and just, i don't know it's crazy I don't think it's the design or the policy of the company. I think it's just people working for them, doing weird things, you know, or I don't know, some glitch with the algorithm, but it's going to be corrected. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm going to be on this one as well. I think with this color, I'm going to add just a couple drops of dish soap and a couple drops of water towards the end. What are you meeting? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyways, if, you know, if you're a friend of mine and you're a believer, if you've had that happen to you, please let me know. I'm collecting uh, instances where that has happened to them. I want to know. We need to deal with that. Yeah, you have rights as long as you stand up for them. You know, this is just the nature of the beast. You know, if you're a pushover, guess what happens? People walk over you. 
it's until you learn to be assertive and not be a pushover that the more not nice people, <laughs> you know, you have to stand up for yourself, no matter what it is, period. That's just the way it is. It's been that way from the beginning of time, I believe. <clears throat> I don't want to be on that board there. Okay, so now I'm doing, this is called Laguna. I don't know how the colors are working there. But, uh, start with one tablespoon. And again, I, I don't need a whole lot because I'm not going to put a whole lot of paint on this. <clears throat> the biggest amount of paint is going to be covering it and then doing a little bit of the ring around it and I'm not <clears throat> I'm not going to do it like I normally do most of them put a whole bunch of ring a big puddle around it to help it flow you know and I saw one lady and I can't remember who she was but uh, I remember that um, she didn't do that she didn't even, and it turned out beautiful. And I thought, you know, less sometimes is better. <clears throat> what I'm wanting to do, <clears throat> I'm not wanting to put, I don't want a whole lot of paint. I use more paint when I'm doing more abstract and I cover the whole canvas. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> oh, I love to watch paint just flow together. And, and just make crazy shapes. And the coolest thing happened the other day. If you haven't seen it already. I had added. I flicked a couple things of this soap in there. You know. And um, when I was over there looking at something else. This teeny tiny little perfect shape. Of a footprint showed up. I was so delighted. And people were like that's not a big deal. But it was me. Because it was in the colors of red, white, and blue. And it was just these. Like needle point toes with the little fat on the top of the toe. It was just the perfect shape of a footprint. I was ecstatic. It was called happy help. I call that happy cell happening. <laughs> that was so cool. A little footprint right in the middle. So cool. Anyway. Cells are fun and that's one thing about the poor is people are all about the cells, you know, fun watching what happens with the cells. And it's like random, you know, it's like, what are you going to get in this adventure of cells? And I got a footprint. It was a tiny, tiny little footprint. It was so cool. I was so elated. Anyway, I think that's perfect. So that's, I got two more. Well, he just takes a while. That's why I have to get up now, take a break, neck's starting to hurt. Woo! I haven't used my, I have an inversion table, you know, like a traction table, kind of, and I haven't used it in a while. I need to, I need to use that. So, here I go. Let's set this aside. Put the lid. The lid, the cute little lid that comes with these fruit cups. They make perfect paint cups. The only thing about those fruit cups is the amount of sugar, even in the light syrup. Right? We don't have, if you added up everything you ate that had sugar in it, there's so much added sugar in everything. And it's ridiculous. No wonder we have so much diabetes in our nation. Becoming a global epidemic. Diabetes stuff. That runs in my family, so. Anyway, so what I do is I, I drain the syrup out of the uh, container and then I, I rinse, put it the fruit in a bowl and I rinse it oh a good two or three times to get as much syrup off of the fruit that I can because fruit has sugar in it naturally <clears throat> and just adding all that sugar is just so unhealthy. Fruit has a wonderful taste by itself. Don't need to add sugar. I don't know why they do that. <clears throat> anyway, and I don't like really sweet stuff like that. It's corn for so much better for you without all that sugar. Okay, so now I have a cup already of my leftover <clears throat> this one off my eyes. purple. This beautiful metallic purple that I love. <clears throat> 
So, I'm not sure. It's got water in it. Anyways, I need to wipe that off a little bit more because I don't know if that's wet or dry. I use the same teaspoon. And I hear no people have issues. There's like, don't rinse your paint down the sink. Well, I had detergent. <clears throat> and <clears throat> I let the water run for a really long time. I don't on city water. I have a well and I have a septic. So, anyways, I don't know what else to do other than to take my stuff and dump it outside <clears throat> in the dirt. You know, I have plenty of land to do that. <laughs> but if you do use your sink, please, if you're on city water, I ask you not to do that. If you have a septic, it's not as bad, but you want to be careful about protecting your septic as well. And there are things that you can add to your septic, you know, that preserves it. <clears throat> Oh, I, uh, hmm. Now, the thing about metallic colors, I've noticed that depending on what pouring medium you use, metallic, you don't want them diluted. So... I just say if you're if you're starting out and you're gonna buy some pouring mediums, just research. There's plenty of YouTube videos. I probably I've been watching painting videos for oh my gosh. I don't even know how long. It's something that I do when I'm stressed, you know, it's like the Bible says, focus on good things, so <laughs> I'm feeling stressed. I will turn on the funny videos, the cute animal videos painting videos, relaxing music videos, and so these pouring artists who have been pouring their talent into YouTube have really been a blessing to me, you know, really been a blessing. I've just sat there for hours watching them. So when I decided I was going to, you know, try doing this, I researched every little issue I can possibly think of before I even started to look into getting stuff. I'm not rich. This is my little savings from not eating out. I'm investing. I don't have it like that to just spend a lot of money on a hobby. I gotta, I gotta make it work. That's a learning process. That looks pretty good. Anyways, I hope that you guys can hear me because um, I'm not sure about my camera, my, I mean, my, my computer. Uh, I think the next computer that I get, I'm going to, I've never owned a Mac before. I'm kind of getting irritated with Microsoft because, you know, when you turn on your computer or it puts itself to sleep and this picture comes on and I can't get it to where it'll show the sign in button. It wants you to click on the picture and go online. And it's so aggressive and invasive. So I said, I'm never buying Microsoft again. I don't know if you guys have that issue. Is there a way that you can change the settings? Because I can't find anything about how to change where they can't control my computer like that. I'll sit there and over and over and over, I'll click on it. The way that I get around that, because I'm not clicking. On their link to go look at some picture before I can use the computer. So what I do is I push Control Alt Delete, and then it forces it to uh, open up. That's aggravating though. Like why should I have to go through that? Just to freaking look at my computer is crazy. But anyway, that's Microsoft for you. Uh. And another thing about Microsoft is um, weird. You know, they have that, well, it's kind of like an app where you talk to it and you tell it to go online and like a robot in your computer. I think Microsoft is, can I think it's called Canteen or whatever. Just randomly, it'll turn on and take over my computer, you know, like something triggered it. 
Weird. Okay, so I'm going to sit this over here. I didn't spill my paint once, so I'm taking this and <clears throat> setting it out of the way. One more color. And then I'm going to end this video and start another one for the pouring part once I get everything put away. <clears throat> so this is the 24 karat gold. And I mean to tell you, that is, I really like that paint. And I think it cost, I don't know, a couple bucks at Michael's. And, you know, these, every, all the paints I have are made in the USA. <clears throat> and, uh, that's pretty thick down there. But sometimes with metallic, uh, hmm, I'll put the plane in first. So the metallic, um, get diluted. And I think, the better quality ones don't. And I'm only making a little bit of this. I don't have that much. But I really, <laughs> I really like this metallic. The metallic gold and the metallic silver or ugh, metallic purple. Amethyst. Both of those are by Deco Art. You can find them at Michael's or I'm sure other places. And pretty thick. Woo, that's more than I needed. Anyway, that's all right. I use this gold, but I don't want a whole lot of gold in this. Just a tiny bit. All right. Sometimes you get bubbles with the metallic and just tap it and it pops. And another thing you could do before you start your painting, let your paint set a little bit just think if you do get bubbles. Of course, most, most people use torches, you know, to pop bubbles. Sometimes you can't see them though. And, um, but they'll come up when it's drying. But when you use, like, something, an additive, like rubbing alcohol, really shouldn't be using torches. You know, some of them do, if it's just a couple of that will hurt it. But you put an alcohol in every single paint. I've seen this one guy, he start, he did a video to show what could happen. <laughs> and he literally lit his painting on fire. I don't know how much he, alcohol he used for it to do that, but I'm just saying, I mean, alcohol and fire, you know, and of course it could get diluted. I don't know how much it would take for that to happen, but I just find taking a risk like that. But that's me. And that's that. I am ready to pour. I gotta take a little break though. I'm going to overdo it because I'm starting to get a little bit of pain. Take a break. So I will be back in a few. I'm going to take my mask off now. So I'll save this video for later for those who are interested in trying this and or like me on this journey learning this craft. Um, and he knows. Yeah, so that's it for now. I'm going to sort of tidy up, and then I'll be back in a few minutes to do the pour. <laughs> Have a blessed evening.